I'm Adam Anschell for Pro Football Weekly, along with senior editor Eric Edholm, looking at the best remaining available players following day two of the NFL Draft. It's presented by Verizon Fios. And Eric, we start at the top of Nolan Naraki's big board, the guys that are still left, and Marcus Cannon, the offensive tackle from TCU. Really a sad story. He was diagnosed with lymphoma and now scaring off some teams. Yeah, we knew that the uh, medical information would play into his draft stock. There was no doubting it. That Cannon was a player who probably should have gone in the second or third round had this information come, not come out. The good news is a treatable form of lymphoma. It appears his recovery time is going to be somewhere in the 12 to 24 week range. So I think teams are just a little bit worried about not having him uh, in the early part of the season. But I think he could be a good player if he gets the right team. The way it is with the lockout now, they might not be having many camps yeah. anyway, so it might not hurt him as much as it would in other years. Now, other remaining players, there's a couple of running backs. Overall, pretty weak class, but still a couple of guys out there. Yeah, not big guys, though. Kendall yeah. Hunter, five foot seven. Obviously, Deion Lewis is a five foot six and change kind of guy. But Lewis looks like a really good football player out there. If you get him in the right system, maybe you've got the next there in Sproles. And Sproles has obviously been a productive player, a uh, guy who was drafted a little bit later on. But that's the kind of guys you're seeing. They're, they're deficient in one area of their game. But these guys both have a little elusiveness and some speed that could help a team out on offense and special teams, I think. I think we heard that going in, that maybe it wasn't top-heavy yeah. at the running back position, but some depth at the position. The top quarterback left after the run in the first two days, Ricky Stanzi from Iowa. You know, it's funny, with all the talk about all these other quarterbacks, Stanzi might be the guy that in three, four years ends up being one of the top three or four guys in this class. I think you give him enough time, you put him in the right offense, you might be looking at a Matt Schaub caliber guy. I'm surprised he's lasted this long, to be honest. Seems like those teams that needed a quarterback and didn't get one would be a good option right there. Finally, Christian Ballard, another guy that was talked about in the first round, but has slipped because of reports that came out that he failed a drug test at the Combine, but still a lot of talent there. Yeah, Christian Ballard at times played like a first round pick. Other times he played like a fifth round pick. I think evaluators look at the average and say he's probably a third or fourth round guy and then these uh, these marijuana concerns came up that's pushed him to day three of the draft round four I think that's where he'll settle he's still a, pro a project a guy that teams have to work on a little bit still looks a little lazy at times so uh, a talented player he's just got to all put it together now all in all still a lot of talent available yeah. I know we've seen a recent draft guys have gone in the fourth round fifth round and really made a difference yeah Aaron Hernandez last year was a standout for the Patriots Mike Williams is one of the offensive stars uh, for the Bucks last year. You know, you look at Jacoby Ford offense and yeah. special teams. So there will be some good football players who go off the board and make instant impacts for their teams in, uh, in 2011. One more day of football before we get back to lockout talk. So we'll see how that goes. For the best draft coverage, be sure to follow us on Twitter or go to ProFootballWeekly.com.